I have control. You have control, sir. Before we finish, John, I'll show you a steep bank to starboard. Follow me through. All right, sir. John Andrews is just completing his first flight in a chipmunk. The Ministry of Defence called it an air experience flight, and that's a good name, because it's an opportunity for ATC and CCF cadets to experience a flight, and to experience taking control of an aeroplane, a chance to learn what it's all about. Air Force has been organizing air experience flights since 1958 and every year some 30,000 ATC and CCF cadets have the thrill and excitement of actually flying an aircraft from one of the 13 AEF stations. Before making a flight there are various points that cadets must learn for their own safety and for the safety of the pilot and the aeroplane. Before flying empty your pockets and leave all loose articles behind. A loose article is anything which is not secured to the aeroplane or crew. There are two sizes of parachute harness in use to accommodate all sizes of cadets. The blue webbing is normally used for small cadets. It's very important to fit the parachute correctly. Place it on a chair, unfold it and sit down on it. On the waistband, you'll find the ripcord, or D-ring, which deploys the parachute, and the quick-release box. On the front of the quick-release box is a plate that turns, and when the line on this plate coincides with the line on top of the box, it is in the locked position. First, fit the shoulder straps. Turn the plate as far as it'll go to your right, beyond the dotted lines, insert the buckle, and let go. Repeat this to insert the other shoulder strap buckle. To fit the leg straps, lift up the leg loop, pass the buckle down through the loop, and clip it into the release box as before. Repeat with the second leg strap buckle, each time turning the plate to your right. The shoulder and leg straps are adjustable. In a sitting position, they should be comfortable, but not loose. To tighten the straps, just pull the free end of the webbing. To lengthen the strap, turn the buckle back on itself and pull the strap through. When the parachute is fitted correctly, the straps should be just tight enough to restrain you from standing fully upright. Removing the parachute is very simple. Turn the plate 90 degrees to your left and press it in, but don't bang it in. Return it to the locked position before you leave the parachute. As well as the parachute, protective helmets must be worn. The fabric helmet contains earpieces and a microphone and a plug on a flexible lead to connect to the aircraft's radio system. The microphone has an on-off switch, which must be kept off except when speaking. The protective helmet, or bone dome, fits over the fabric headset and is secured with a chin strap. Cadet Andrews, come and stand by. Suddenly, it's your turn. So, with empty pockets and parachute fitted, you make your way to your first flight. But keep your wits about you. The apron is a dangerous place if you're careless. You'll not hear so well with your helmet on, so be aware of what you're doing. As you walk out to your chipmunk, watch out for other aeroplanes that may be taxiing about. Always approach a chipmunk from the tail and never go near the propeller, whether it's turning or not. When you reach the aeroplane, 
It's perfectly obvious where you can walk and where you can't. There are black rubber walkways and signs where you mustn't walk. The staff cadet will help you get into the cockpit. Once settled, he'll fit the four safety harness straps. Finally, the staff cadet will connect your headset to the aircraft's RT system. When you're strapped in, have a look around, but don't interfere with any of the controls without the authority of the pilot. Can you hear me all right? Yes, thank you, sir. Good. Now, what's your name? John Andrews, sir. Right, John. If you're all set, we'll taxi out. Yes, sir. Tell the pilot if you've flown in a chipmunk before and whether you want him to carry out any particular manoeuvres. one or two further points worth knowing. How are you feeling, John? 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 There is a remote possibility of an intercom failure. First, check that the plug is still connected. If you still can't use the microphone, you can speak directly Alicia, to the pilot quite run. easily and ease the earphone the back to him. Help it away from your face. You might feel airsick, especially if you're worried about flying. If you do, warn the pilot immediately you feel unwell so that he can get you back on the ground and prevent you being ill. If necessary, you can use a sick bag, which is either tucked under your left harness strap or kept in the left stowage of the cockpit. But you're far better off being ill on the ground. It'll make you more resistant next time. But you haven't come to be ill, you've come to enjoy your flight. Be a part of it. You can help the pilot by keeping a lookout for other aircraft. If you do see another one, describe its position to the pilot using the clock code, if you know it. Don't assume he's seen it just because you have. Excuse me, sir. There's an aircraft at two o'clock low. Contact. It looks like another chipmunk. When you reach the local flying area, you'll be given the opportunity to fly the aeroplane if you wish to. To transfer control of the plane from one person to another, there's a standard procedure that's used worldwide. If the pilot wants you to take control of the aircraft, he'll say, You have control. You will make sure your feet and hands are on the controls, clear of the transmitter button on top, and reply, I have control, sir. Never say it, unless your hands and feet are on the controls. Handle the controls gently. The pilot will help you by telling you what to do and where you're going wrong. If you wish the pilot to take control back from you, say, You have control, sir. And when the pilot wants control back from you, he will say, I have control. When he does, let go of the controls and say, You have For some cadets, it'll not be their first chipmunk flight and they may feel they'd like to experience a few aerobatics. For each new manoeuvre, the pilot will ask you to follow through. When he says this, 
put your hands and feet lightly on the controls so that you can feel the movement, but don't try to move the controls yourself. In this way, you can quickly learn the basic control of the aircraft. Finally, don't be afraid to talk to the pilot. Ask him questions. It'll make the flight more interesting for both of you.